Hello everyone, and welcome to Beam Saber, the Cenotaph, part uh, 24. 24. 24, we are on part 24. I am your host, Austin Ramsey, I will also be your GM for the evening, and I am the creator of Beam Saber. My pronouns are he, him. You can find me on Twitter, at not an in. And if you would like to uh, buy Beam Saber, you can do so at austin-ramsay.itch.io slash beam saber. If you want to uh, financially support the development of the game beyond that, you can do so at patreon.com slash austinramsay. And as always, this stream is presented by You Don't Meet in an Inn, an actual play podcast about exploring obscure tabletop role-playing games with a diverse, rotating cast. And you can find that on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts. This evening, I am joined by Sasha. Hi, I'm Sasha. You can find me on Twitter at Sasha underscore Renault and find all my game dev stuff at Tea Cabbage. My pronouns are NNs. Thank you. Also with us is Jess. Hi, I'm Jess. You guys can find me on Twitter and Twitch.tv at Quasinim. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I also host a podcast, The Movie Morgue, your premier movie autopsy podcast at Movie Morgue Cast on Twitter. Also with us is Takuma. Hi, I'm Takuma. My pronouns are they, she. Uh, my Twitter is at Takuma underscore Okada underscore. Uh, I am on several Kickstarters right now, so I should probably talk about those. Um, one of them is called Beneath the Canals, which is a system agnostic mini-zine. Uh, like, one page of printer paper folded in half, basically. Um, the original goal was 200, and then we have just, like, a, a flood of stretch goals, which are all similarly one-page zines. But you, if, you, if you back it at a certain level, you can get, like, 15 or 16 of these zines right now together. Um, and they will be much more expensive after. So I highly recommend getting on that. And I am also um, an as of yet unannounced Veil stretch goal, probably for the for the Veil inheritance. Um, it will probably be up some point within the next two weeks. I don't know. I don't know. Very good. And also joining us, of course, is Ray. Hi, I'm Ray. This is my cat. I use them with he him pronouns, uh, and you can find me on Twitter at Ray Ray the Gay Gay, uh, where I'm trying to be more active. So I don't know, come say hi. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you very okay. much. Okay, so let's get over to that play screen. Wonderful. Last we left our heroes. The four of you, with your Avis, have managed to make your way through the store. First, the administration level of the Red Lur, uh, Twindler and Red headquarters. And then you went through the storage level, which was full of aerosolized chemicals that uh, were flammable. And you managed to get out of that without getting too beat up. <laughs> you, you even, uh, shall we say, cleansed that area by exploding it all. <laughs> Which, I mean, is one way of cleaning, is <laughs> just burn it all down. Um, so you did that. And then you took the next elevator down to the manufacturing level. And we left off there with the four of you in your avis at the entrance to the manufacturing level. And there is a, uh, I believe I said, car-sized robot, like, smashed to pieces just inside of the doorway. Uh, you're sort of at a uh, T-shaped hallway, like, set of hallways at the top of the T is where the entrance to the elevator is. Echoing down the halls, there's gunfire from somewhere else on this level. But approaching you is heavy footsteps. When you say heavy, 
are we talking relatively or in the general sense of heavy footsteps? Like, are we talking boots or are we talking obvies? The latter. Okay. Maybe, I mean, it's... I, I'm not going to say... You can't with just... Eh. I'm not going to give you more than that without a roll. Hey, maybe this person just has really fucking big boots. Excuse you. <laughs> what is an avi but a very large set of clothes? <laughs> what is the magpie but a very large set of clothes? Mm-hmm. It's wow, an extreme okay. fashion statement. Yeah. Twitches, er, uh, scratches proud. So, what do you all do? What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> well. well, the easy move is to scan the area. Yeah. At least for me, it's the easy move. Um, <laughs> so I'll do that. How's that for a roll? That's a good start. Um, let's see. I think this will be a, a. Well, what are you gonna roll? Just scan. Um, just straight up scan, yeah. Yeah, I think that this will be a this will be a controlled standard. Hey, that's a four. That's all right. Oh yeah. Okay. So the potential consequence uh, that you have hmm it's not going to be whatever this thing with the footsteps is arriving because that sort of defeats the purpose a little bit of your success um, I'm going to add one tick to the contact clock Oh, right, we have clocks in this game. Yeah. Uh, where are those? There they are. Okay. Okay. You good with that? Yeah, I'll take it. Yep. Okay. So, you scan ahead. T describe to me what this looks like. Um, I think it is... Um, because the magpie is just getting a general reading of the area, it isn't trying to get anything in specific. Um, it's sort of um, moving, uh, sort of expo it, like rolling onto its side to expose its belly to the like outside, and then like pulsing um, the knell um, out in like an echo, echo location kind of kind of reading. Okay, so you send out this burst of uh, scanning energy and what you get back is that the thing approaching you it appears to be the same or a similar model to the one that is smashed in front of you it's a quadrupedal uh, robotic uh, quadrupedal machine it's unclear if it is piloted or if it is a drone um, and it is it's clearly armed though it has two machine guns on either side of it uh, and it is moving towards you it is just like the brickiest um, branch of the tea is it coming down like is it coming like down straight at us or yes. is it coming from one of the sides we can't see it yet no it is coming direct like it's not in view yet but it's coming down a side hallway and will hit the hallway directly in front of you. And is it heading towards... It Will it turn towards you at that point? Unclear. But it is getting closer. It's just like the boxiest machine you've seen in a long time. It is just sort of like this long, featureless, steel gray brick on four three-toed legs. Yeah, can I just say exactly what I'm picturing? Has anyone here ever played Total Annihilation? Yes. The Fido. Yeah, that's probably accurate. <laughs> I love that thing, it's so goofy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's coming closer. 
Uh, I'm going to hold position with uh, gun trained and see if it goes past. But I'm going to be ready to fire in case it doesn't. All right. What about uh, Pitchfork and Tower? I don't want to move too much because I don't want to make too much noise, but I also want to be, like, ready to move in case something does happen. Um... Hold on, do I have a shield declared, or has that spot been? I am going to declare a shield and say that I'm like holding, holding it up right now, and like I'm going to get as close to uh, Scarecrow as I can. Okay. All right, so you're providing some cover for your scout. Tower, what are you up to? I honestly don't really know. I don't really know what Tower can do in this situation. Because, like, this thing sounds big, and to neither Tower nor their Avi is big. Uh, uh, yeah, I think Tower was just been, like, tempted to jump out of my Avi and just go running across. I mean, your Avi does have op fine optical camo. Yeah, then I'm then I'm not going to jump out of my Avi, but I am going to sort of uh, try and like snake my way uh, along the periphery of the room where the where maybe the lighting isn't as good, uh, and try to get a sense of what's up. I also have marked down uh, for my Avi that I have. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> um, I have, uh, night vision sensors. Yes. Sorry, I'm tired. Yes. Uh, uh, to be clear, this level is, has lighting. No, but I'm so. wondering if that, uh, extends. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry, she's being a shit. Um. I'm wondering if that extends to uh, heat vision or infrared. Um, yes. I'm wondering if I can tell if the Avi is piloted by something. Ah, okay. Um, do you want to give me a scan roll then? Or something else, perhaps? I could try. <laughs> <laughs> well, I you're, got one. <laughs> you're in a controlled position right now, so... Yeah, um... What's the worst that could happen? Mm. Fair, fair, honestly, yeah. Can I try and, like, maybe get a little closer and uh, just try and see if there's anyone in this thing? Yeah, absolutely. This will be controlled okay. standard. I'm just going to suffer with a scan. That's a four. That's, That's a four. Terrible. Okay. Um, let's see. Sorry, I was letting out. Yep. So the potential consequences, I will add another tick to the contact clock. Do we know what that clock is for? Nope. Presumably I contact. Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> wow. How come I can't believe you're bullying me like this? Listen, death is coming. What? <laughs> you just made a face when I said fuck it to that clock, and I'm I'm deeply offended. <laughs> Could have been at anything. Could have been at this orange vanilla Coke. <laughs> that was definitely you know, like that. a reason to make that face. Yeah, yeah. So, you scanned this drone, and you you turn on your heat sensors of your Avi's NVIR. And what you're able to spot through the, uh, I, th I think it like comes to the corner and stops just like a little bit out of sight. You can see that there's a heat source inside of it, but it's definitely not a person. Okay. It, it could just as easily be like a motor or power source of some variety. 
But do I know definitively that there's not a person in there? There's definitely no humans in there. If that's a dog, I'm going to be really mad. (laughs) It is not dog-shaped. There is... What is glowing the heat source is, like, too precisely shaped to be organic. How's that? So it's like a motor. Yeah, it's probably a motor. (laughs) (laughs) Austin out here trying to paint pictures with his words, and we are just too fucking dumb. (laughs) I mean, it's also my own bad habit of never giving assured answers with information gathering, and just be like, you think it's this. It's probably that. But my my dark side just being like, letting your minds linger on, what if there's a dog inside of this thing? (laughs) Um, what if yeah. it's Scratch? <laughs> uh, scratch is true form. Yeah, but <laughs> Scratch is true form. Anyway, a tiny dog inside of a giant fucking mech. <laughs> I would I would not put it past them. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Scarecrow, you now have eyes on this thing. It is paused at the intersection, and is sort of like looking left and right. Sorry, can I just, can I communicate that there's not a person in these things, that they're drones? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, in that case, um, real fast, you said there are machine guns on it. How, di- like, are they free swivel or are they, like, mounted facing forward? I just want some details into how reactive it can be. There's one on either side of it, and they are on, like, swiveling mounts. But obviously they have a limited firing arc each because of the fact that they are on the sides. Okay. Um, Does it seem to have noticed us or is it just sitting there? Um, Well, at the the moment it hasn't, like, acted. It it appears to be considering its options about... Because it's come to, like, a four-way intersection. So. Okay. Um... I'm not sure what this looks like mechanically, but, like, my thought... Actually, hold up. I have a real gun. Real guns are quiet. I mean, until they hit something. <laughs> yeah, but they, all, they don't, like, you know, make the combustion noise. Yes. I'm, I'm still gonna, like, like, the equivalent of, like, a held action is, like, I'm going to watch it, and if it turns towards us... Then I'm gonna fire at it. Like I've I've got my gun trained on it. Basically, is my idea right now. Yeah, I still don't know what it is. Okay, exactly. All right. Yeah, she uses guns. Yeah. <laughs> save save the bullying for downtime. <laughs> um, no, don't actually. You can <laughs> you, you can do the bullying during the mission. It's more dramatic that way. Uh, but yes, Scarecrow, you are correct in your predictions. It does turn down the hallway. Presumably it heard the noise of the heavy doors of the manufacturing level opening or the elevator itself arriving at this level and it starts coming towards the four of you. So you're going to let her rip? You're going to let her rip. Okay, what are you going to roll? I would like to roll Bombard since this is straight. Yep. Long and narrow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Controlled... Hmm... Yeah, controlled standard. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Double checking my character sheet. Yep. That's 46. <laughs> That's a six. That's a six. Okay, yeah. So you put a round right through the center of this thing lengthwise. Just in one side, out the other. Your round crashes into the wall some distance down the hallway making a loud noise but uh yeah this thing like doesn't even take another step as you hit it in fact it like stumbles backwards with the force and just flops on its side sparks coming out of it hydraulic fluids leaking out of it and it just goes limp can i tell if there was a dog in there ah I I mean, no, because railguns would remove the dog. <laughs> um, this is a bad conversation. <laughs> Beam saber. Railguns remove the dog. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I'm just very, very much enjoying Takuma's facial expressions <laughs> throughout this session so far. Uh, I, I, I appreciate her face. <laughs> so, what do you all do? I suppose I could wiggle over there and see what this thing actually was. Okay. So how are you examining it? Um, I suppose I'll um, hop out and... Oops, that's not what I meant to do. Um, and just sort of um, take a look at it and then um, grab some tools, which I can declare, um, and like just pop the casing open. Um, and I'm rolling engineer to do that. Okay, and uh, since this will take like a couple of minutes to examine this, what are the rest of you doing while Dredge is working on this? I think Tower's sort of like... I don't want to say skittering, because that implies more limbs than the Mantis has, but like, skittering over <laughs> to uh, the next sort of section of this this area like around the corner okay from trying to scout out if there's anything else in the area all right look out for pitchfork what are you up to i hmm I'm not going to be very helpful with this thing now. Uh, I am going to go down a little ways down this hallway and see what's down that way. Hmm. Yeah, just a little bit. Not that far. The, the same the same direction as tower, or are you going off in a different direction? Uh, you said it was T-shaped, right? Yeah, so when the elevator door opened, you were essentially at a four-way intersection with, like, your side being the, uh, the elevator doors. Um, and which one did tower just go down? I mean... <laughs> Here's the uh, thing, we're not doing like a heavy layout dungeon yeah, crawl. Yeah. So it's really a matter of like, are you looking for something in particular and who are you with? Those are really the important questions for how we're gonna be exploring each level of this quote unquote dungeon. But if it helps, I went down the one that the chunky boy came from. Right. So straight I think ahead. we could probably just maybe move as a unit through there maybe. Yeah. Okay, so is Everyone sticking to, sticking together? Okay. And I want to explore. <laughs> I mean, you have by far the fastest AV. So if yeah, you want... Just, like, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, can I just like loop around one of the side hallways? Just like kind of dash around and then loop back up with the group if I don't find anything of interest? Yeah, sure thing. All right. So um, we'll, we'll come to you uh, back to you in a minute, Tower. Okay, Dredge, what are you going to roll? I'm going to roll that good, good engineer. Yeah. Um, what's my position in effect? Um, controlled standard. Sweet. That's two dice. It's a six and a one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, um, what do you learn about this thing? Uh, I think from taking it apart... Yeah, it's definitely a drone. There, there's no nothing organic about it. It is very much a machine. It's pretty standard parts. There's nothing like advanced about this machine at all, really. Like, it's got normal ass machine guns, so to speak. I think the most interesting detail about it is that while these machine guns could be a threat to your AVs, they are not anti av machine guns. Hmm. They are like 
anti-personnel weapons. Um, is, is tech like no, notably old? Mm, I, I think it is notably old in the same way that like the original Xbox is notably old. Right? Like it's still effective and probably and definitely still works, but like it's not state of the art. Um, oh, hmm. Actually, something that is interesting about this drone that you pick up is that it has new parts. Like, the designs are older, but some of the parts inside of it, you can tell from taking it apart that, like, some of the stuff that would have been prone to wear and tear, like the joints, have parts that have been replaced and are clearly of newer... Uh, manufacture than some of the sturdier parts and simpler parts like the armor for instance how new is so it's new like you found like an m16 with a polycarbonate frame or something um less like that scarecrow and more of like if you just found like a, a i don't know uh what would be a good example if you found like a a, a thompson submachine gun that had from like World War II, but it had like a new barrel on it. Like okay. exact same design, no new materials used, but like freshly milled. Okay. Interesting. Okay. How how long has this place been abandoned for? Uh I think I previously said like a couple of years. Are the parts new enough that they would indicate that they had been replaced after it had been abandoned? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Getting my mecha zombie vibes. So, <laughs> Dredge, do you want to relay any of that to uh, the squad in any like any particular fashion, or do you just say, "I'm passing all that along"? Yeah, I'm sorry, and I'm just passing that al along. I yeah. wish I had a brain today, but I don't. That's fair. Okay, uh, Tower. Is there something in particular you are looking for down here? Um, I think this is the manufacturing level, right? Yes, it is. Then I think I am looking for anything that I could be using, like, that I could bring back to uh, use to fix any of our obvies, like even just little stuff um, or like anything that would give us a better indication of um, what might be on the levels below. So those are, those are two different goals. One of them is essentially looking for loot and the other one is looking for information. Yeah. So ooh. Which of those do you want to pursue? Also, just uh, before before you say that, something we haven't said on air as a reminder to the listeners is that the squad is working for the Breath of Faith, and they are down here to answer three questions. What does the Sovereignty Engine do? Where is it located? And how is it controlled? You're also technically down here for the March of Saints to make this whole facility safe. Can I change the question I'm asking? Of because just based on that because I'm a little bit dumb. <laughs> yeah, of course you can. Uh, can I try and find any information about Sovereignty Engine? <laughs> <laughs> um... Sure. How are you going to do this? Uh, I think I'm going to try and find um, either any, like, physical um, stuff, uh, or I'm going to try and, like, find a computer terminal and just try to get into that. Um, which is not going to go well, because I have zero in interface, but um, <laughs> I'm going to try it anyway. Okay. So, yeah, you're able to... So, you, as you go down these halls, 
let me describe them a little more. So this level is very much like a somewhat cliche sci-fi uh, facility in that it has like stainless steel walls, like gray tile floor, and a similarly concrete looking ceiling with like fluorescent lights every couple of feet lighting this area. You can vaguely hear the hum of machinery on this level to join in with the hum of the LED lights. I said they were fluorescent earlier, but really they're, they're, they'd be LED by this point or some equivalent. Um, most of the doors in these hallways are people sized. There's a couple of them that are like double doors that you would presumably be moving like trolleys full of things in and out of or various carts. And you haven't really seen any that are like Avi sized doors, even though the hallways are Avi sized. Avi sized and mantis sized are different things. <laughs> um. Fair. I, I, okay. I would say that with some effort, the mantis and the magpie could get through the double doors that okay. are not intended for Avi's, but your Avi's are unusual. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, are any of them, do any of them look like they're a jar at all? Uh, or can I, like, can I, like, hop out of the mantis and just, like, test the doors? Yeah, sure thing. Um, so you, you get out, you test the door, and what you see is that the door you approach has a keypad on it with, like, a little, uh, display screen. And the display screen is saying emergency systems engaged all doors unlocked we exploded things <laughs> and so okay um this isn't D, &D. i can't check for traps <laughs> <laughs> but can i uh can i uh like see if there's anything actually hmm so this wouldn't even take a security cracker. I can just, like, go in. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, it's unlocked. Yeah, I'm just going to push the door open. I'm, like, communicating this back. I'm, like, sort of, like, under my breath saying, like, oh, shit, oh, shit, unlock doors. Oh, shit. Not actually that, but that's the gist of it. Um, <laughs> this is the greatest field intelligence I've ever received. <laughs> oh. Pattern report. Oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. <laughs> That's how it be. That's okay. how it be in the circus. So you, you go inside this room and it is it opens onto what appears to be a like factory line, an automated one. So there's okay. conveyor belt and there's a bunch of those robotic arms that would be assembling pieces. And there's a couple spots where there's 3D printers. None of this is turned like active at this time it's all like it has power you can tell because there are like green leds showing that these things are turned on they're just not making anything at the moment can i tell what they'd be making and also this place hasn't been in operation for years uh what the fuck yeah um can hmm. i um, this is while you're taking apart that large drone dredge. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, okay. So let's see. Hmm. Yeah, they are making parts of some variety. In fact, at the end of this conveyor belt, there is a, like, essentially a box that has an open top and is sitting on top of like a, a very small cargo drone. Like imagine one of those Ikea like push carts, but crossed with like a Roomba. <laughs> and so there's a crate on one of those and it has power too, but it's just like sitting there with this full crate of, op of parts that's open. And I, 
I don't think that you can make out what the parts are because there's nothing in your background that would indicate you would just like know that. No, that's not a thing I would know. Yeah, and I don't want to make you roll for this because I don't think that the information would be worthwhile, frankly. Okay. Um, would I be able to tell that the information isn't worthwhile? Uh. Or should I should I ping Dredge? I mean. There's also a control console in here if you want to try and, like, get more info out of that. That will have more info than looking at whatever these parts are. Okay, I'm gonna, yeah. Also, is is any of the stuff in here, like, dusty? Can I tell how long it's been here? I was wondering if you were gonna ask that. So, every... <laughs> <That's> scary. <laughs> um, anything that is meant for human interaction is dusty. So, like, the chair in front of the interface, the keyboard on the interface. I think you find someone's, like, lunchbox on a table nearby, and that's dusty. Uh, I don't recommend opening it. Um, but, like, the machinery for this automated factory line is not dusty. Okay. Uh Robot zombies. Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna ping Dredge, um, and I'm going to make my way over to the uh, console. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna like when they're done, I'm gonna sort of signal them to come join me. Okay. Please. Yeah, I'll do that. What the fuck? <laughs> and by them, I meant like the group. Okay, so you're not touching anything until everyone's here. I'm gonna, like, make my way over to the console, uh, and I think I'm gonna, like, see... Oh, that's not my character sheet. That's why I can't find anything. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna, like, try to scope it out, see if there's anything I can do to, like, get in on it, but... Alright. I mean, it's it's got power... Is it locked? Is it like security? Uh, security? Yeah, I would say that there's a path. It's asking for a password. Okay. Uh, um, environmental storytelling. I think the password's going to be in the lunchbox. Oh my god. Can I open the lunchbox? <laughs> <laughs> Bola has destroyed our brains. <laughs> I gotta check. I gotta check. You open it up, and there is the grossest, oldest sandwich inside. Okay, I close it very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but look, you're suggesting it. I gotta check. I mean, you mentioned the lunchbox. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's supposed to be a detail for flavor, but no. <laughs> Specifically okay. mentioned the lunchbox. I had to check. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna like wait until the the squad is in. Um, All right. Sort of... So, yeah. uh, uh, we'll fast forward. I'm guessing that everyone moves over to this area where Tower is. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Who is going into this room? Because that means you need to get out of your Avi. Scarecrow is staying in the Karasu and keeping overwatch all right i'll head down yeah i should probably stay outside okay so pitchfork and scarecrow are you two like watching opposite directions yeah that sounds right okay um so pitchfork a couple minutes into this you one see fear <laughs> you see someone like poke their head around the corner at the end of this hallway and they gesture for you to come closer and then they dip back around the hallway and it takes you a moment to recognize that whoever this was they look like Scarecrow's younger sister And we'll come back to that in a minute. 
So. Holy shit. Tower and Dredge, what are you two doing in the meantime while the other two are on watch? You suck, Austin. <laughs> oh, Austin. <laughs> I know what this is, and you suck. <laughs> Fantastic. Oh. Uh, I hmm. I want to take a look at the um the factory line. Okay. All right. I like I said. I'm not going to have you roll for this. Um, these are parts. Uh, for drones, this specifically, I think, is <laughs> like this this particular uh, what do you call it? Assembly line makes the joints for that Avi for Avi for that drone that you examined earlier, Dredge. Is there anything in the AR here? Uh, yes. Um. Yeah, what you can see is that the uh, the assembly line is on standby, and the cause for that is that the crate at the end of it is full, and the crate is still sitting here because the uh, Roomba cart has not received an order for the parts. I see. Um, hmm. Can I uh, see where that little Roomba thing would go if it had orders? Yeah, you can absolutely see that there's like a uh, an AR like line, so to speak, painted on the floor mm. that heads out of this room and presumably somewhere else on this level. I'm going to go follow that. You're just gonna go back out. I mean, unless there's like I uh, like I'll ask um, Tower. What did you want me to look at here? Uh, I just I just wanted to see if you could get into this terminal, but like I can you know I can always follow that thing if you want to do the terminal thing. Well, or I'm better at, at sweet talking that. AR than than login screens, but I can try. Um, That's fair. I'm sorry. <laughs> No, it's fine. Is there is there a space for me to be to to um, use emoji here, or is it just a, an interface? Hmm. You know, I think that the yeah, with with your training, you you can have a look at the the interface and see that there is indeed a security app connected to this terminal. And you can also see, let's see, what would it, what would it look like? Um, I think it's like a big padlock that, that is, what do you call it? Not quite anthropomorphized. Like it doesn't have a face or anything. It's but, like clippy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like clippy, but a padlock. <laughs> Brilliant. And also, <laughs> there are marionette strings rising from the top of it and into the ceiling. Hmm. Okay. Why does everything have to be a mascot? It's it's the era, you know? This um, is what happens when you let brands be people. <laughs> is that... Oh, God. Okay, well... How do you sweet talk a... Hmm. Hmm. I, yeah, is it possible to like, do something with the marionette strings in which I'm like, pulling it a away so, mm, I don't know, I want to do something fancy here, but I don't have any good ideas. Um, do you need a minute to think about it? Sure, yeah, come back to me. Okay, pitchfork. Yeah? <laughs> you gonna... <laughs> Do anything about what you saw? <laughs> Scarecrow. Yeah? Do you have a sister? No? Why? Are you sure? 
pretty sure. How sure? Uh, unless she's like three, I don't. I'm gonna get out of my mech. <laughs> okay. Do I have any indication that we're watching opposite directions? Mm-hmm. So, like, do I know you're getting out of your mech, or...? Is... I am doing it as quietly as possible. Excellent. Is... Uh, Scarecrow, is this something we need to roll for, or are you happy to just let Pitchfork get I'm hap I'm happy to let it go. Okay. But I will also make this slightly awkward, and I'm going to assume you're making small talk. So I'm just going to start asking... While you're sneaking around, I'm going to be asking... So what about you? You got any family? <laughs> oh no! The one question. Silence, you get silence. I am going to try to sneak my way over to that corner and like, see what's over there without walking over my big stompy mech. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I don't think I'm particularly sneaky, but I will try. Uh, I have a one in prowl. Okay. Cool. Down to zero. This it's will zero. this will be controlled limited. Okay. Uh, yeah. Let's just roll some dice. Let's just roll a die. Uh, prowl. Control limited one die. Oh, buddy. That's a three. Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's controlled. Okay. Over so there, Austin. What's over there? <laughs> so you come around the corner and you see this young woman who looks a lot like Scarecrow but is younger and she's wearing like Jovengelian uh, dress uniform and she sees you and she says you're Pitchfork right? Yes she, she takes a step back from the corner and like gestures you she says come here quickly we need to talk I, Why? I don't want... I don't want Rissa to see us chatting. My throat mic is still on. So turn it off or change the channel. You're professional, aren't you? I'm gonna pretend I turned it off and okay. I didn't. Okay. She's like, you get back at, why what? <laughs> well, hold on, though. If it's a throat mic, it shouldn't pick up anything she's saying. No, it's not going to pick up the other side of the conversation at all. Yeah. Um, so, so I know that you're talking to someone at this point. Yeah. Okay. So she says, okay, listen. <sighs> you spent a couple weeks with Rissa now, right? Yes. You might have noticed that she's a little off. A couple. Look. Okay, let me start over. I'm Claire. I'm her younger sister. She just said she didn't have a sister. She also has severe PTSD. Ah. Uh... Yeah. A couple of years ago, her whole class, it which it, to say they were like a to say they were a class is underselling how close they were. They all got wiped out. She was the only survivor. And then she went missing. I've been looking for her since then. I approach her directly, but I don't know if she could handle it. 
Not yet, anyways. Okay. What do you want me to do? I just... I guess try and find out, like, what happened to her? Why she... Why and how she disappeared? Where she's been? Listen, I don't think I'm the right person. Oh shit! Person for this. She she says, "Oh shit, uh, I have to contact you later, okay?" And then she winks out because she was an AR element. And you hear a buzzing sound, pitchfork, and a half dozen rotor drones come crashing around the corner down the hallway in front of you. Fuck you, damn it. <laughs> and they start making a beeline right for you. Ah! Uh, I thought it was controlled! <laughs> yeah, now it's uh, risky. Uh, I'm gonna turn around and run for it. <laughs> I'm gonna say we have company. And now it's time for the Karasu to spin on a dime. Oh my god. Okay, so Pitchfork, you're you're running Prospect. back. You're running back for uh for Bert. Yep. Okay, what do you want to roll for that? <sighs> I mean that's probably just Okay, how am I doing I'm I'm just sprinting. I mean, I'm just sprint I'm just going for it. I don't think there's anything else complicated here. Like, that's just another prowl. You're just yeeting. Okay. Yeah. This will yeah. be risky standard. It sure will be. Let's see what happens. One die. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's a two. Oh, no. Huh. I'm not a good yeah, so one of these roto drones, they are like about the size of a beach ball, I would say. They have a pair of uh, rotor blades on them, hanging above them, and underneath they're sort of a like very angular design, and they've got some like fine. They, they've got four fine arms coming off of the main sort of diamond shaped body those arms they look like a much smaller version of the type that the magpie has in their sort of spindly nature mm. uh, as they get closer and you look over your shoulder as you're running you can see that they're equipped with a variety of tools uh, as one of them flies by you it sears your arm open with a cutting torch. Take the level two harm burned. Oh, don't like that. Another one? <laughs> I wanna I wanna resist that one. Okay, how are you gonna resist? Hmm. I have a couple options here, because I, I could declare armor. I do have uh everybody hurts, which is four ambushes. Or I could just roll a resist. Uh, I am gonna say the resist roll. And you got hella prowess. I've got a good amount of everything except acuity at this point, which is nice. Um, yeah. Uh, and how am I doing this? So, so I see it come in with a tool. <clears throat> Like how? Like could I? Could I reasonably like snap it off before it gets to me, like this limb, or like hit it aside? Is it like? You know, I think I think if it was anyone else, the answer would be no, but you're you're the soldier. <laughs> um. So yeah, I think I if will you defend myself by ripping off limbs. If you if you want to like try and hurt it, to to like knock it off course. That's, it's not going to destroy it, but yeah, you can try and avoid that way. Give me a prowess roll. Okay. 
Yeah, I mean, it's not like ripping it out uh, per se, I guess, but it's more like yanking it and like dragging it off into another direction. Aw, I but wanted the arm if you were ripping it out. <laughs> You've got oh a whole bin of well, That's a three. <laughs> oh Fuck. my god. I haven't rolled a success yet today. At all. Oh no. I mean, that's a resistance <laughs> roll, so. I know, but it's. Still... I don't like this. Oh. So take that three stress. Yeah. I mean, you got three. You got four bad rules out of the way right there. So that's, that's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm O for six. I'm O for six. That's uh... wow. But Whew. okay. So yeah, you um you managed to avoid it, so you don't take that level two harm. So uh, you all this can I assist? Uh, let's see. So I think what you you turn the Karasu around, Scarecrow, and. You watch his pitchfork like sprints around the corner, followed by a small cloud of these drones, and she just barely manages to avoid getting torched by one of them. And what are you gonna do? Okay, you said they're about the size of a beach ball, right? Yeah. A... Uh, how many? Half dozen. Okay. <laughs> Lean out the side. Out comes Hugin, and I think she's like still harnessed in. She's like. You know how like you can unclass just enough that you can move, but you're not fully out of it. So she's just like hanging and aiming. She's gonna take. I'm on a hunt. Okay. Um, let's see. Yeah. Okay. This will be risky standard. Okay. And. Uh, And I, I think as part of, like, kind of the rhythm of it, I think... Okay, so I, I want to throw a bit of flavor in here. I think she pulls the release, and she starts doing the hand... And as she does that, she whistles to Hugin, and she also says AP. So she leans out, and then Hugin flies into her arms, and she lines the shot. This could really suck if this fails. That's a six. That's a six. Okay. So yeah, you uh, you take a shot with your rifle and down one of these drones. No problem. They're still coming on. Uh, Tower and Dredge, what do you Hello? two do? Um. Oh, the, uh, the cart Roomba activates. <laughs> Okay. And it goes out of the uh, the double doors. <laughs> so Scarecrow, you and Pitchfork, you both see this like flatbed drone with a crate on its back start heading towards Pitchfork down the hallway. Just like goes right between Bert's legs. I'm g I'm gonna. Can I jump on it? Can I, can I ride that little buddy? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I was gonna do too. Yeah. You absolutely. <laughs> you wanna come ride right that? <laughs> The two of you can absolutely get on this thing. It's not even going to take a roll because of the fact that it's not going fast. It's large enough. Like, there's no issues with staying on it. <laughs> so That's what we're doing. <laughs> so it comes out the door, and Dredge and Tower are both riding it. It's going, like, very slowly. <laughs> yeah, it's going, like, I would say, like a, like, a bit faster than a power walk, a bit slower than a jog. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine a power walking mech? <laughs> Ain't nothing gonna break my stride. That's Sorry, that's how the mantis moves. Oh, Just power walking. Um. So yeah, the two of you burst out of this double doors, and immediately ahead of you is Pitchfork, just fucking sprinting towards you, being chased by five rotor drones. With just that's like their bad. their little tool hands just like making snapping swinging motions at her back hmm. I assume aggressively right oh yes <laughs> these are clearly not friendly okay. are, they, these are not flying back patters uh, okay. so. <laughs> Good to we know. just want to give you a back rub yeah. <laughs> who wants a body massage uh <laughs> Bizarre. Excuse me? Austin, no. <laughs> no. Okay. It's a big head all be gems. 
It's a reference. Anyways. Um, <laughs> I assumed, but... Okay. Oh, uh, <laughs> thank you. Okay, so... Uh, Tower and Dredge, what are you going to do with this situation that you are uh, power walking towards? <laughs> Are slightly faster than power walking. Yes, but I don't have a word for that that is easy to say. Lazy uh. jogging. <laughs> <laughs> that you are logging towards. Yep. I mean, hmm. I guess the thing to do would be to go back into my mech, because that's where I'm useful. Um. And I guess I'll see you wherever this ends up, uh, Tower. I'll see you later. Have fun. All uh, right. I have an idea. Yep. How close are these these little babies together? Uh, they are frankly like bouncing around the hallway erratically. Like they are occasionally bouncing off of each other to no ill effect. Do you think they're close enough that if I like? turn my taser thing up to 11, I could pass an electric current around in the swarm of them. Hmm. <laughs> nice. Um, <laughs> I, I would, okay. That sounds like you are, like, lowering the position to desperate for increased effect. Yeah, that's, yeah. Lovely. And an extra die, because I get that. Okay, uh, what do you want to roll for this, uh... Oh, can... oh, shit. Can I say finesse? I don't... Um, th I mean, you can. Mm -hmm. That'll be desperate limited, huh. which become Or, sorry, risky limited, which then becomes desperate standard. Do you want me to help here? What would... What do you think this would be? Because Struggle. I... Struggle. Like no. you, are, you, you are, oh, no. you are mounted, charging towards these things on your your trusty steed, yep. wielding your electro lance. Yeah, fuck it. I'll push, and if you want to help, I'll take it. Um, I have a lot of bonds with you, so that would be three. Uh, Wait, actually, no, because then I won't get the extra die if you help. So don't. Is that tr okay? Yeah. All right, you got it. Because I need it to be desperate to get the extra die. Remember to mark XP. Yay! Um, so that's struggle. So that's zero dice. Pushing it to desperate to make it one die and pushing for a die, so that's two dice. I am making good life choices. Oh no, <laughs> this is gonna so go so badly. <laughs> so desperate standard or desperate great desperate great Yay. if you're rolling battle yeah. <laughs> that's a two oh my welcome to the club bud <laughs> oh my god how much sniping do i have to do cool. god damn it i just wanted to look cool welcome to hell can i take your order <laughs> Okay. Fuck you, roll 20. <laughs> you suck. Oh. Okay. Next week's Seed Attack brought to you by Tabletop Simulator. <laughs> God, that'd be so fucking messy. Um, okay. So. I just wanted to let's see. Away. It's desperate. Yeah, okay. Here's what happens, Tower. You, like turn up the power on your stun rod and you're just like oh, I'll just ignore the safeties and turn it up higher and you go to jet like you're you're getting closer and closer and then just fucking explodes in your hand so junk your stun rod okay. and take the level oh no wait yeah just oh wait no it's desperate yeah okay also take the level one harm Shocked. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna oh I'm gonna steal a gun. <laughs> so Dredge and Pitchfork, the two of you reach your obbies and get inside. You've just watched uh Tower Beef It. Um 
Oh, yes, also a thing to note is that the electricity running through you and the cart Roomba malfunctions the cart Roomba and it just like stops rolling. <laughs> Bye, I'm leaving this call. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. I can't to, believe I'm being bullied like this. To be clear, the like floor markings still exist in the AR. It's just not going anywhere anymore. So, dread your pitchfork. What do the two of you want to do about these five drones? I think like Tower just like Sorry. <laughs> hmm. What do I want? They are now closing in on Tower. <laughs> because <laughs> because Tower is now the one between the drones and y'all. Can I pick up Tower and then you can take care of the rest? Uh, I will try. <laughs> I need to... Have I gotten back into Vert yet, or yeah, am I yeah. still not there? Okay. Yeah, no, okay. the two of you are both in your obvies. Uh, then I'm just gonna swing the shield like... A fly swatter? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And you're gonna scoop up tower. Mm-hmm. Okay, what do each of you want to roll for that? It's uh, manipulate, I think. Yep. Wait, why do I have... No, that's the wrong character sheet. That's why that... That sucks. Here we go. That's a three. Okay. Six. That'll be risky standard for you, Dredge. I'll take it. Um, I mean, it's like either battle or manipulate, because I feel like a, a bunch of tiny drones isn't quite as much of a fight, but they're both two. Yeah. I th like, I think, I'm just kind of like, Whoa. I think it would probably be risky standard either way, since... Okay. Yeah. I mean, battle is the more sensible one. Not that it really makes that much of a difference. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think like what what the what the, the difference in flavor is here for manipulate like am I just gonna like push them into the wall and just like scrape them against the wall? <laughs> like actual bugs? Actually, I like that. Can I do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. So oh Dredge, you got a you got a five on your risky standard manipulate. I sure did. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, at least some of us are getting okay rolls. <laughs> <laughs> so you scoop. Oh, and that's a six from yes! from uh, pitchfork for that uh, ad attacking the drones. Okay. So uh, let's see. All right, well, I'm gonna add two more ticks to the rotor drone clock. So you scoop up tower into your many hands. Thank and then you. Pitchfork comes in and slams, slams her shield into a whole bunch of these, uh, gets three of them. Two of them manage to like catch the air draft of the shield yeah. and ride it out. And then they start digging their way into the magpie with their cutting tools. Yes. <laughs> so take the level two damage uh, burrowed. Mm -mm. Um, I'm going to resist that. I would like to not be burrowed, I think. Oh. Yeah. Um, you resisting things just scares me. I am bad at it, is the thing. So, um, so what quirks do you want to exhaust? I'm exhausting rubbery and flexible. They cannot get well, purchased. How are, well, hold on. How are you going to resist this? Because I oh, okay. get to pick which attribute it is, as a reminder. Uh, that's true. Um, can I... Hmm... Can I just sort of like pluck them off with my extra hands yeah and then crush them in those hands instead yeah well i mean you're not gonna get to crush them but you can okay you can pluck them uh cool beans. so yeah that sounds like expertise all right um so that's 
Two d six. Well, no, no, you don't roll. Remember, no, with don't. vehicles, I you don't. just exhaust four minus your uh, uh, your attribute rating. I keep forgetting. That's that's how that works. Well, that's okay. So, um, how many quirks are you exhausting, and which ones? I guess two, because that's how many things I have in either of these. Um, yeah, I guess that's rubbery and flexible, and, um... Many-limbed? I've already spent many-limbed. Ah. Um, yeah, I've, I'm running out of quirks at the moment. <laughs> um, Sounds like strategically structural would apply. Also spent that last session. <laughs> I'm down to ominous or the Nell. Um, I guess ominous. I don't really need need this thing to look that scary. So it looks really silly of me doing this. I think. Yep. Just kind of spoils the the mystique for folks. But you know. <laughs> Just plucking these drones off of you. We haven't thought you were dignified for a very long time. Don't worry. Wow. <laughs> oh. Yeah. The, the, the magpie is like ooh creepy and scary, and then you see it going. Eh. And it kind of it kind of ruins it. Yeah. <laughs> well, so yeah, remove all that damage. Yeah, tower probably put flame decals on it at one point, and that just removed all of the all of the terror. Okay. Um. So, who wants? Who has something they want to do? Uh, we still got two of these things to deal with, right? Yep. I'd like to shoot another one. Okay. What's uh, what's that look like? You're still hanging out the side of it, and yep. Okay. So, uh, let's see. This will be risky position in part because you don't have a great shot because now it's sort of like the magpie and Bert are both active and moving about, and these things weren't easy to hit in the first place since they have somewhat erratic flight pa patterns. Yeah. I think I'm still going to take that shot. Um, I think it'll... Actually, I think it'll be risky limited. Because of their, um, like... Because you don't have a clear shot. Like, it was risky before because they are a threat. Okay. And before it was standard, but now it'll be limited because... To be just double checking that the fine sniper rifle is accounted for. Oh, okay, then that'll be risky standard. Okay. That's a six. That is a six. Okay. Just stealing all of our good rolls. Just doing it and doing it and doing it well. There you go. So tell me I'm how. I'm good at one thing, and that's killing. Tell me how you take out the last two. Okay, so I think. What she's going to do is, since they're doing like this kind of like erratic swarm behavior, mm -hmm. and she's using AP rounds, I think she's watching for like them to kind of regroup after the magpie brushes them off, and she's holding the line, waiting for them to line up. <laughs> Just a split second, and she's gonna put one through both of them. Very good. All right. Beautiful. So. You take care of those, and as the last one dies, you can hear all around you machinery start up. Mm. <sighs> I would like, like this. I would like to um, reach down. Well, I'm, I'll, I'll put tower down if you would like. Um, Thank you. And uh, I would like to reach down and sort of take hold of the little Roomba buddy and move it along the track as if it were like a little car, little toy car, <laughs> um, and and guide it to where it was supposed to be because I suspect that it has permissions to go wherever it's going. Hmm. Okay. Didn't I, didn't I, like, fuck it up and deactivate the electronics on it, though? Yeah, that's why I, I hmm, shit, you're right. Sorry. Well, you can carry it. I don't imagine why you wouldn't be able to. Huh? I mean, you can carry it. Yeah. Well, it, I guess it depends on whether or not the, the chip needs to be active in order to pass it. Because if, if it's just like a pass card, right? You don't need that 
you don't need electricity for that to work. So yeah. we'll find out the door, I guess. <laughs> yeah. In the meantime, though, um, Reese is going to send a couple messages here. Um, to Dredge, she's going to say, can we track down power conduits on this level? I don't want this place to wake up. I've got a bad feeling. All right. That sounds good. And I'm going to switch channels. Yeah, Pitchfork, what was that? What's going on? Uh, you have a sister, right? I don't have a sister. What did you see? Your sister. Okay, I have a quick question for Austin. Have I, have I, am I aware that I have an old ghost lying around? Uh... Because I haven't personally established whether I have any history with it. I just, like, said that's a thing that is in-universe. I've said that in as a player, not as a character. Yeah. Um, what do you think is more interesting? I'll put it in your hands. Mm. I'm going to say if you gave her enough pieces, she would be able to figure it out. But she's not had any. She has no reason to suspect it's still active. Okay. So it's not like a conclusion she would naturally come to. All right. Okay. Yeah. Um. Pitchfork. I don't. Okay. I have three brothers, okay? That's a lot of brothers. Wait, wait. What was her name? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> it was Claire, I think? Cla it was Claire. It was Claire. But also, that's very, a very funny thing for this work to say. <laughs> I mean, gay culture. So I have a, I actually have a question here. Has Risa actually used her real name at all? I don't. Like, I think it would probably be on like documentation if that was a thing. But I don't think she uses it like casually. I think you used it when you introduced yourself, but I don't think you've used it since. <laughs> And as yeah, we've we're... just seen, none of us can remember anything or can read, really. Jesus, it took like <laughs> six sessions for me to remember my own goddamn character's name. So pr it, it's not a huge priority here at the Cenotaph, whatever. You... No. I think it's just, hey, you, hey, can you help me with this? Yeah, it took me four sessions to remember what my obvious was called. So, uh, we don't. Yeah. Names are it's fake four... anyway. I, th I think that's diegetic, honestly. I That's yeah. just the vibe around the set of tough. Yeah. So yeah. you might have, but yeah. like, yeah. We're all dumb. Okay. <laughs> Dredge doesn't use their uh, core first name either, so. Yeah, okay. Um, because here's the thing is I think like, I was like, oh, we can leave this it, be ambiguous, but Pitchfork has been forthcoming enough that like, I think it, she already has the pieces to put it together. So it's like, okay, hold up. How old was she? Younger than you? A little? A little. I can't About tell. I'm not good with ages. 18 to 21? <laughs> <laughs> yes? Deactivated that bitch! Whoa! <laughs> what? <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm Claire, Clarissa, Reza. God fucking damn it! Ah, uh. why would you do that to your name? <laughs> we have a we have a ghost in the, we have a ghost in the system, guys. Ah, <laughs> and, and you you a... can hear you can hear like some banging, and I think you can just and actually if anyone can see the cockpit, you can see her like slamming her fist into the console. <laughs> I'm like trying to figure out what in the world made you go from Clarissa to Riza. <laughs> Pitchfork asking the big questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 
in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> assuming, okay. assuming she spells her name with two R's, which is an odd start, but it's possible. This is well, what, what that came from was not wanting to use... She, like, she's not, like, throwing the name away, but she's also trying not to use it recognizably. For sure. Hmm. Tower's name is technically Blackberry. Names are weird. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, what are the four of you doing? I'm to tooting this uh, little little droid to its its doors. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, I would also like to open this conversation up to the rest of the group. And the summary is going to be, okay, guys, something is fucky. There's a ghost in the machine. There's a ghost of me in the machine. So whatever is in here, either there's an internet, either there's an independent entity interfering with this, or we're all gonna start seeing some fucking dredge up your past bullshit. Sorry, dredge. <laughs> no, no offense taken. <laughs> um, okay. Anything in particular we should. Keep an eye out for from past. The little girl looks like me. Shoot her. Hmm. Is that how that works? Like, isn't it? Yeah. Di like digital. I'm not. It's sure. AR. It makes me feel better. <laughs> it's a well, waste of ammo. And also, I don't have a gun. <laughs> yeah. If 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 you want to give me a gun, uh, sure. But I'll, I'll see what I can do. Happen. Hold up. Let me check my load. <laughs> <laughs> because I will give you a gun. Uh, Hold on. It's, is, uh, is Dredge the only one with a gun besides Scarecrow and it's like handguns and not the magpie? Is I that true? don't technically have one declared. I can get one. Um, the only thing I've ever declared is a, is a, is a, like a, a knife and not for fighting. Oh my god. Yeah, I could declare a gun on my load. But Tower absolutely did not bring a gun, so mm. like... I have a rifle or shotgun. I guess everybody has a rifle or shotgun. Yeah. Anyway. Alright. Not important, but interesting. <laughs> so, the four of you are following the AR path that this uh, cart Roomba was supposed to be following. And... As you follow along the path, the sound of machinery gets louder. And you turn a corner, and there's a whole bunch of these AR guidelines heading all through the same set of double doors into a room that you can tell by the way the hallway is shaped must be massive. Oh, okay. And you can also see that there are more of these cart Roombas moving in to this room with crates and moving out without crates. Oh, well, perfect. This is the this is the spot. Um, and I'm gonna can I put the magpie in there? Just squeeze it through the double doors. Yeah. Okay. And I'm assuming there's room on the other side. Tower, are you gonna do the same with the mantis? Yeah. What about Pitchfork and Scarecrow? Are you going to look for another doorway? Are you going to wait out here? We you... should look for another doorway because presumably there are building drones in there, so there should be a, you know, service entrance or, like, cargo entrance. Yeah. Okay. So the two of you are off, going to go off looking for another way into this space. Meanwhile, Dredge and Tower, the two of you squeeze your avies in through these double doors you get some like angry AR complaints from the cart Roombas <laughs> um, but they don't really like they are trying to send your IDs like interruption of process complaints but the two of you don't have Twindler and Red IDs so you can just sort of see them like getting stonewalled <laughs> <laughs> with these interruptions sort of floating above their heads in the AR. Oh, poor babies. Yeah. Uh, so you squeeze inside, and inside is a massive room. It is not as large as the storage level, which was all one big place, 
but it is inside here is his entire automated drone production facility and these little cart Roombas are dropping off parts which are then being sorted by arms and they are assembling piece by piece both the rotor drones and the large quadrupedal drones lovely okay um Bef there should be a big lever with some hazard tape on it um that says don't turn this off and then we'll go flip that um, says dredge confidently <laughs> yeah Okay, I mean, I'm, I'm trusting your judgment here. I don't know. <laughs> you tiny fool. <laughs> Luck. <laughs> so, bef okay, so, uh, which one of you is getting out of your AV to flip it? I'm going to say I'll you're able that. to find it, because it's probably, like, there's probably a couple of these emergency stops that are, like, on hand. I'll do it. I'm. I can like just hop out of the. Uh, okay. The so you if I go... recall my shop days, they should be like a big red button. Yeah. They should be at every station. Mm-hmm. OSHA <laughs> compliance, motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> so you and this place, I did say last session that this place is very OSHA compliant. This level. So you go. You slam your hand down on the big red button. There's like a bell that rings. And some yellow lights flash like a strobing, or not strobing, but like a sound. like a rotating light, and everything comes to an immediate halt. And then, in the AR, you see those marionette strings rise up through the ceiling, and it starts all up again. Bummer! Oh my god! <laughs> And we're going to take our break. That is not OSHA. <laughs> <laughs> it is the god, OSHA. Okay, so everyone, we will be back in a couple minutes. I hope to see you then. <laughs>